Hey everyone, a very special edition of the live magic Q&A with me, Madam Pamita, and my really super, super special guest, Naja Lightfoot. He, she is the author of Good Juju. We are so excited to have her here. I have been looking forward to this like it is a present under my red Christmas tree. I've been so excited about this. So I'm going to tell you about her in just a second, but let me tell you where what we're doing. Who, what is this? This is the free live magic Q&A tea party with me, Madam Pemita, and my special guests. Every week we have a special guest. It takes place every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We record this as a live free Zoom meeting every week. It's like we have a little clubhouse and you get to come into the meeting. So if you're seeing this on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or wherever it shows up out in the world and you wanna be in the super secret clubhouse, you can do that by going to spellsquad.com. You sign up, you get on my email list, you get a free ebook, Seven Secrets to Supercharge Your Spell Work, and you get the access code to get into our Zoom meeting every week. It changes, I mean, it doesn't change. This, it's the same code every week. You'll get an email reminder in your email, a link there, and you can just come on in and see who the guest is and come and ask us amazing questions. And we're so happy to have you here. It's really, really wonderful. So. Anyway, um, I, if, you're one, if you just stumbled upon this and you don't know who I am, I'm Madam Pamita, and I am the owner of Parlor Wonders. I'm a, a reader and a root worker, a spellcaster, magic person, and I teach magic. I've written books about uh, tarot. I've got a new book coming out next year called The Candle Magic Book. Um, I sell spiritual supplies. I make beeswax candles and all kinds of magical things, and you can find all of that on my site, parlorofwonders.com. Our special guest today is Naja Lightfoot. And Naja is the winner. So excited. I mean, you are like the superstar. I think you are the biggest thing to happen to the live magic QA so far. You are oh, yay! <laughs> She's the winner of the 2019 NYC Big Book Award, which that is the most exciting news. It kind of happened after we had already planned this meeting and she's like, wait, stop the presses. There's some new news that I want to add to my bio. And I was so excited. To, I was like, woo, yay. I was like so excited to add that. But that's not all she is. She's, she's not just an author. She has, well, she's written this amazing book, Good Juju, which is an amazing book that I recommend to everyone. It is such a beautiful book that gently leads you through all this amazing magical practice. And I think it's amazing. We're going to talk about her book for just a minute, but I also want to tell you a little bit more about her. She's an initiated member of La Source Ancien Onfu, Onfo, did I say it right? Onfo, yeah. Um, she's a, that, which is a private voodoo society in New Orleans. She's a sister priestess of the Divine Feminine, an active member of the Denver Pagan community. So she's in Denver, and that's where I saw her at the INATS trade show. Um, she also, interesting, fun fact, practices kung fu and she talks about kung fu and magic in her book which i absolutely love completely new information for me and i absolutely loved it tai, about tai chi and kung fu and magic um she's a folk magic practitioner like me she does hoodoo and pagan rituals and she another thing that i love about her is that she's like really tapped into being in awe of the mysteries like really tapped into having that open innocent heart that isn't jaded, that sees the world as a magical world and opens up to that magic. And I bet as a result of that, well, I don't say I bet, I know as a result of that, you are a super magical manifester. I know it. Am I right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So did I hit everything about you? You did. You did oh my a great gosh. job. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I want to talk a little bit about your book. So um, your book, Good Juju, which I have on, as an ebook, so I cannot show you my copy, but I sell the physical books. But here, Naja has a copy. She's going to show it to you. There it is. <laughs> Good Juju is an amazing book. I love this book so much because I, I tell people who are learning magic, like people come to me like, I need a basic magic book. I need a book that's going to show me like where to get started. I don't even know where to begin. It's such a big world. And then I get into some real esoteric book and I don't know what to do. And I always recommend your book because it is such a great, gentle, easy, but not 
dumb, you know what I mean? Yes. Easy book to gently lead people into living a magical life. Would you oh. say that that's accurate? Yes, that was my intention. It's really important to me to, in talking about magic and um, rites and practices that I want to really help people develop a magical spiritual practice, uh, something that they do on a daily or seasonal or whatever basis, but that they're consistent with their practice. So, um, cause that's really where the power lives is when you do things consistently, not just, you know, when you're just trying to get off a spell because it takes time and effort to become powerful and magical and, and to um, feel comfortable working magic. So that's really my intention is to help people be comfortable just one step at a time, one small ritual at a time um, to develop a magical spiritual practice. Yeah, it's like integrating that magic into your day-to-day -day life so that you start living a magical life. Mm -hmm. And it's so, it isn't hard to live a magical life, I don't think. It's just a, conscious, a, a consciousness about magic and a consciousness and an awareness so that you're not just doing the spell when you're like, I need that last $100 of my rent money and I need it now, but that you're actually working, let's say for prosperity on a daily basis, like doing that or whatever you're thinking of, but having that magical life um, on a, you know, as a, 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 almost like a viewpoint, would you say? Yeah, exactly. Like a lens that you look through, that you see life and experience things through your spiritual eyes. You see yeah. things through the lens of, of spirit and wonder and nature and awe. The universe yeah. is just such a magical, wonderful place. Um, I was just out looking at the moon tonight, hanging up Christmas ornaments and going, oh, is this great? There's the moon while I'm, you know, going through all my ornaments to put on my tree. So it's around okay. us all the time. It's so good. I think about like, I mean, you're, I love, one of the things I love about your book too, is that you, it's a very, it's a very kind of personal approach. It's the Naja approach. It is not a rigorous cookie cutter or even you know sometimes I think that there can be things like this is the way that is the right way and this is the only way to do it and if you do it any other way you're doing it the wrong way and I always kind of go like oh when I hear that I might go yeah that's great information but that doesn't allow for the personal gnosis of does this work for me or doesn't this work for me? And the thing I love about your book is you can, I mean, as me reading it, I can tell it's your personal gnosis that you're sharing, your personal knowing about magic and you kind of pull a little bit from here. You make a gumbo, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, I always tell people, you know, first and foremost, I do not speak for any organization or tradition. Um, I only share what's authentic for me and what's helped me, what I know to be true for me. And I've, you know, walked this path for a long time and um, I really wanted to be a help and an aid to people who are looking for information. And I um, just try to share from my heart and, and what I've done and what's worked personally for me and um, for, you know, loved ones or friends that I've maybe had the honor to, you know, sit and chat with for a little bit. but. Yeah, it is authentic. It is, it is from my heart. And, but it does come from, you know, learning things and being initiated and um, being um, just always in awe of, of, of magic and spirituality. And I'm very much a spiritual person. So I just try to run everything through that filter. And, and I am really honest about that. If it doesn't work for you or it doesn't feel right or this doesn't fit and you know, move on, try something new. And it should be fun. You should have fun too. Magic's supposed to be fun. Shouldn't always be so serious too. You yeah, know? I, you know what, you and I think so like, I mean, it's <laughs> crazy and canny because I always think it's like, I offer, like I offer teachings, but someone will say like, well, aren't you supposed to do it this way? And I go, try it and try my way and try that way that you've read about over there and see what works for you. I can't exactly. say my way is right for you. You know, I, I can share what works for me mm -hmm. and maybe that will be useful to you, but I never 
it's like, I'm not that person. And I think you're that way too. So that's one of the things I so loved about your book is that I could tell from a, from a spiritual practitioner viewpoint with looking at it through that lens, I'm like, oh, she's really kind of sharing. It's almost like you're sharing your personal grimoire or your personal book of shadows of all the stuff that's worked for you. And having that peep into your world, to me, is such a, a, a gift that you're sharing. It's so beautiful, you know, because it, oh, it's about you. your personal, personal work. And I love that. So, yeah. <laughs> so we've got some questions are you ready to jump into some questions yeah all, okay. oh my gosh you guys so cute so katie says hi hi katie hi katie um, um natalie says i've seen your house candles on your site i'm not buying a home oh so she's asking a question for basically for me because she's but we may both answer this question so let me get into it she says i've seen your house candle so i i make a i make all these beeswax figural candles right and i make a candle that's shaped like a house that's used for house spells buying houses blessing houses all kinds of work around a house right or properties so i've seen your house candles on your site i'm not buying a home but need to find an affordable apartment in a hopefully good neighborhood should i use this candle if so suggest a ritual well maybe there's some things that naja can share about this but yes you can use the house candle to have anything representing home so it doesn't mean you are buying a physical house. It could be renting a place. It could be used for an apartment. It could be used for a condo. It could be used for anything. But it it's a symbolic representation of the home. So what you want to think about, Natalie, is what is it that you want to bring to that home? You want an affordable apartment in a neighborhood that you like. And so um, I would suggest a couple of options. If you want to focus on the affordability, then green candles have to do with prosperity and money issues and having enough money and all those things. So that may be the way you want to go. But just edging that out a little bit, I kind of would go in the direction of maybe an orange one because orange is road opener energy, opening up opportunities. And since there's more than just the money factor in this, you want to um open up that road in that sense open up the road open up the remove all the blocks and open up that opportunity orange might be your better choice than that i've got kids walking through what's up morgan oh my god my kids <laughs> you guys are being really loud over there they're playing video games with each other and they're really being loud anyway <laughs> secret cameo appearance for my kids voices um so what about you, Naja? Do you have anything that you would do to open up a, what would you suggest? Is there anything you'd think of? Um, well, I could have used the candle too as like a vision board. Like, you know, get some little, go to like Michael's and get some little uh, furniture pieces and bless them and put around the candle and um, use some Florida water to smudge all the little furniture pieces and and do your blessing work during the full moon, which is, you know, during the time of the waxing moon when the moon is growing from new to full to increase and bring that desired into your life. And then, you know, in the right, I would probably ask for a home that meets my physical, spiritual, financial, and emotional needs and let it go at that and try not to get like too specific, but be open minded with it and have fun. Like, bring that energy of joy of visualizing this home, like how you will feel once you have this home, like see yourself sitting in it or looking out the window or will you have a garden or if you like flowers or you need a place to plant or um, you want to have a good room for your TV, go find some little things and put that around the candle um, when you do your magic because the more that you can um, bring visualization into your right, the stronger and more powerful um, that magic will become for you. And I love that you make beeswax house, house candles. That would be great. Yeah, I love, you know, I love working with beeswax. It's a super powerful, I go on about this all the time, but it's such a powerful tool for magic. It's really amazing. And the then, yeah, and then if you're going to Michael's, it's almost like, and you're buying many furniture pieces, 
It's almost like you're going shopping for furniture in your new home. It's perfect. They do have those little, I love, I kind of love going to Michael's. I'm one of those Michael's junkies. Probably <laughs> <you are. laughs> oh my God. What's our Venn diagram look like, Maja? It's like no, nothing that doesn't cross. Uh, so forget the Kung Fu. That part would be in your half of the Venn diagram because I don't do any Kung Fu. That. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But I, but you know, I have always like been interested in it. It's very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> anyway, going to Michael's is such a great thing because they have these little tiny doll furniture. Like yeah, they do. They have little chairs and mirrors and plants. And I mean, you could decorate your little beeswax candle house. It's so right? cute, right? Put right? my house on it. You know, maybe you've got some favorite. You know, who knows? Plants, colors. You could buy. You could make it like a, re you know, really put your time and energy into your manifesting your home spell. I think it'd be great. It's like fun to me. I love that. It, it, like you said, it makes it super fun. You're making it really fun. And I just, you, you brought up something that really opened up something with me. It's like I sell. Uh, there's people that sell happiness oil. I sell an oil that's a happiness oil called Joie de Vivre oil. Nice. And I, I would use that joie de vivre oil on your home spell because ultimately, what is our highest calling? Like we want it, or the deepest calling. What is it that we want to get to? It's like that deep sense of joy and happiness in our house. Of course, living in a neighborhood you like is going to make you happy. Of course, ha being able to afford your rent is going to make you happy. But the deeper thing is the happiness. And so putting that joie de vivre on your, um, on your kennel would be amazing. That would be an amazing thing to yeah, do. Yeah, I think that would be great. I wish her well. With her That's home. really great. It's exciting. Yeah. All right, let's look at another question. Let's see, we've got lots of questions, so I don't want to, um, I want to get to as many as I can. All right, Angela says hello. Amanda says hello. Uh, Bronwyn says hello and thank you. How do you change a love attraction to a long-term partner? I did a spell for attraction and it worked very well but how to change to a deeper monogamous relationship. Do you want to take this in a jar or do you want me to start out? Well, I would hope that um, she is seriously working on her love altar. So she did a spell for an attraction, which is great. And she saw that that manifested. So the great thing about the love altar, which I write about in my book is, you know, I work my love altar every Friday. <laughs> my husband and I have been married for over 20 years. And it's something that I continually do every Friday because love is fickle. Love can be stressful. Love can be great. Sometimes love is annoying. And all kinds of things happen in your love life. You know, I just try to keep it real, <laughs> you know? And um, so if you want to term, you know, bring a long-term monogamous relationship into your life and you're using magic, then one of the things that I think that you really need to commit to is working your love altar on a long-term basis, because then you're putting that energy, oh, this is long-term, it's important to me, I'm gonna set aside some time every week or once a month or whatever, it, however it works for you to, to, to work that love altar so that you're constantly putting out that love energy for a long-term relationship. That's my, that's my thoughts on it. I love that. I love that. I think that's so important to do that maintenance magic, you know? What I mean? oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, but it's so much easier to maintain something than it is to fix something magically. Right. right. If somebody's, if you're doing a maintenance kind of love work maintenance spell, um, it's a lot easier than turning around somebody that's heading off into the sunset. I think, you know, it's a very interesting thing about a relationship questions because I get, I understand and I get doing um, like uh, coercive magic. Like I have no problem with coercive magic, people doing, I want John to fall in love with me or I want Susie to fall in love with me. But um, for me, I also think about, there's a, there's a kind of a little, there's these, a, these like kind of power concepts that I bring to, a, to look at something from a, maybe a step back from the situation, the immediate situation. And one of the power phrases that I use in my magic is perfect outcome and perfect timing. So that adding that to like a magic spell for that love with that person, 
opens up the best and the highest or the best and just the juiciest outcome. So that if, let's say you're going to, you're, you're in a relationship with John Smith and you think this is awesome, but if it is not your best and your highest, wouldn't you want to have that best and highest, even if it means being with someone else? My opinion is I wouldn't want the best and the highest. I wouldn't want to stick with that. I would want the best, right? For both people, for him and for me, right? So maybe adding that perfect outcome and perfect timing. The other part of that, second part of that. So perfect outcome may be that John Smith is your perfect outcome. Great. That's just going to reinforce that. If John Smith isn't your perfect outcome, then it's going to bring that perfect person to you. Perfect timing, I think, is also important to me, too, because we can get impatient with magic. Mm -hmm. um, we want to have our results right now, right? right. And sometimes mm -hmm. that may not be our best to have it exactly. right now. I also like to include in accordance with the highest good for all. Personally, I don't, you know, I'm not, oh, I want so-and-so to fall in love with me because sometimes, you know, even when you're doing one of those love spells, you may, you may not know what's best for you. So if you can be more open-hearted, more general, or, or try to work on yourself so that maybe you're more attractive to that person and they'll look your way. Because um, sometimes I feel like when people start working magic for like specific outcomes on a specific person or whatever you can get really trapped in a lot of you know bizarre thought patterns like oh yeah i can do this i can do that especially you know when you're just um you know learning or something like that so i try to like to say you know if you're trying to bring love into your life then just like you said with perfect timing perfect outcome in accordance with the highest good for all and 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 be really sure you know that about your words and your intention because you know john may come calling and then he may never go away <laughs> you know what it's so important back in my olden days oh i learned my lesson doing that. <laughs> i learned my lesson doing that because i did a spell on this guy that i was attracted to this is way back when and I did a, a powerful like attraction spell on him. Like he would be, a, he would be so into me and he would be this. And that relationship was not a great relationship. And then I had to end it. And then he was still obsessed with me. And I, I felt bad because I didn't want him to be obsessed with me. I had to undo that spell work that I had done before. So I'd got done good spell work, but it's not, right and it's not fair to have someone be obsessed with you when you that relationship isn't meant to be or isn't the best thing so i've really learned my lesson personally about doing real coercive specific coercive magic and so from my own experience i think oh you're going to get a better result if you say i want my soulmate or my part my true partner my person to come to me rather than say i want john smith to come to me or I must have this person i my own experience has taught me a lesson. I don't begrudge people doing that. I don't think, you know, I don't judge people for doing that because I'm not in their shoes. I don't know, you know, but for me, I'm like, oh, I yeah. did that once and it, it was not good. It I was not good. like, like, if you like those qualities, you know, you talked about, you make those beautiful candles, you know, the figural candles, the, you know, the female and the male figural candles. Like, I kind of like, like, the qualities that John has, you know, whatever it is about John that you like, and you could put those qualities into your figural candle when you do your love spell, you know, whatever is attractive to you about those qualities about John, and then you open your life to a whole bunch of different, <laughs> you know, guys who may have those same qualities that you might not even realize, you know, whatever that's attractive to you. So I think there's all kinds of ways to work it. Yeah, and I think in you know in terms of like deepening a relationship, if you want to have that, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so sorry. It's like cats are doing crazy things. My kids are doing crazy. <laughs> this is what happens when you come out to the Christmas tree. All kinds of chaos breaks out. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, if you're doing a spell to open up someone's heart to get them to the place now, you know maybe maybe that person is not a person who 
wants to have a monogamous relationship or wants to be in a deeper relationship. And if that's the case, you're trying to, you are trying to transform them or make them or control or, you know what I'm saying? You are doing that coercive magic to turn them to someone else. So I would be very gentle with that and be, you don't want to be too I, I, heavy handed with, this is my opinion, only my opinion. Put a, do a heart shaped candle. Do a candle to say, let our, you know, you could do one for you and one for him. Let our hearts open up to the best and deepest of this relationship. And then you will see if, if, if he does go down or she goes down that road to uh, a deeper commitment, then they were ready to do that. And they were just maybe holding back because they were afraid or shy or whatever. But if they don't, if they go as deep as they can go and as deep as they can go is just dating you and seeing you once a week, and that's as much as they want, and they're not gonna say, I love you, and not gonna say, I want a commitment, then you get, it may be painful, but maybe that's the information you need to know about them so that you don't have somebody that's running away or breaking up with you every six months or you know any of that other stuff that can happen. So heart candles. Heart candles to very gently put in that um, intention of we go as deeply as we can go in this relationship without forcing them maybe what do you think yeah that makes me think of when you said the heart channels it made me it came into my mind like courting whatever happened to courting people <laughs> like you know like hey you want to get together for coffee lunch you know dinner's kind of heavy let's do some light things and have the heart shake candle burning and you know um come from a lighter place and such a heavy place of oh i have to have john you know or I've got to have Sarah, you know, that's, that's kind of creepy, you know, like, you know, <laughs> we're not, we're not saying you're creepy, Bronwyn, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, let's just like stay like in the courting, like, you know, like when people just used to like try to get to know each other and then love blossoms. Oh, yeah. like blossoming love spell with roses that blossom and heart candles, figural candles. Oh, I think we're really onto something. I just got, oh my gosh. Putting roses on your altar and doing Aphrodite, if you wanted to work with Aphrodite. Yeah. Yeah. Roses on your altar. Oh, you know, your yeah, eyes. so sensual. And you're all like, oh, man, I got to, I could feel that. Now that's powerful. Did you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> you said Aphrodite and the roses. How about some rose oil? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. You can work the hell out of that stuff. Yeah, I think that's really lovely. And I have, you know what's really exciting is, we're in developing right now a rose candle that's like an actual shape and size of like a big blossomed rose. Oh, so excited about this candle. It's not out yet. So I'm doing Oh, this that sounds thing. wonderful. But they it's like, time it off. It's like, it's a perfect, you know, one that you can use for your like um, rituals to Aphrodite, to Mary, to um, Santa Muerte, to all those. To pray those on Friday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> To All everybody. those goddesses that love roses, you yeah. can use rose spells. So I yeah, love that. Rose that's spell. great. I love it. All that's right. So work with some roses. Work with some rose oil, which is very expensive. You can get okay. a diluted version at the um that the Whole Foods. I know they have that um diluted version of rose oil. And and put some roses on your altar. Wear the rose oil and do a heart shaped candle or do that rose candle if you can wait till it comes out. It's not out yet, but work with a heart shaped candle. We do have those. That's like now. fun. Um, all right. So Annie has a question. My husband, oh, it's all love questions today. Naja, you are, you're pulling in all the love questions. My husband and I are separated. I want to do a reconciliation honey jar spell for my husband. I don't have his hair. Can I use his clothes, which he wore and tie it with my clothes instead of using hair? Can I use catnip, cinnamon, Adam and Eve oil, and dried hibiscus herb? Boy, you got a recipe already there, Annie. So, yeah. Naja, what do you got to say about a uh, honey jar? Oh, I think honey jars are great. You know, I love um, working a honey jar. They take time, though. They're very slow because honey is very, you know, it's ancient, it's old. Honey jar is something that you got to burn a candle on on a frequent basis. But definitely, you know, if you have clothes or, you know, sometimes you only have like a piece of paper that somebody wrote something on or you know you can put that in there it's kind of like well um madam pamita and i've been talking about like getting all bound up well i don't have hair so i can't do well yes you can you just said it you have clothes 
well, take yeah. a little bit of that and put it in there. That works just fine. I mean, it's great if you have someone's hair or nail clippings, what we call personal concerns, right? But sometimes you don't, you know, sometimes you just have to go with what you have. So I would definitely put, um, oh, so I see someone said, how do you burn a candle on top of a jar? <laughs> so, well, you, you light the bottom of, you, you hold the bottom of the candle like a taper till it's melty. And then you use that to stick on top, on top of the jar. And then the melted wax sticks to the top and then you'll light that candle and then you end up with this beautiful honey jar with the wax that's all melted all over it which is also like a good um significant um signif how do you say that word significant yeah <laughs> yeah um of your work because you see all the candle wax burning over it so yeah put, use a piece of clothing works great yeah, you know what, here, okay, let me ask you this, Ja. So um, if I get a picture from the internet of Daniel Craig, I can do a honey jar on Daniel Craig? <laughs> I well, know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I don't know how powerful it'll be, but it is this photograph. <laughs> so there's nothing like the real thing. You know, I was taught, you know, kind of, well, the closer you have to the real thing, the more powerful things are. But, you know, always you got to be practical, use what you got, if you're trying to medium, and these pictures out there, you know, this doesn't say you can't print it off, you know, I'd probably write some love notes on it or something, <laughs> a little bit you're, more. You're nicer and more generous than I am. I'm like, hell no, you're not going to get, Daniel Craig doesn't know who the hell you are, sorry. <laughs> you know, miracles happen, you never know. <laughs> that's that's going to be a hunting jar that I'm going to be working for a long ass time. Yeah, yeah, you said I did. We did say it takes a long time. You have to be patient. You know, you might give up before it happens, but hey, you never know until you try. Yeah, I think one of the things that we that you're oh my gosh, we are like two. I mean, I'd say our Venn diagram is identical. Um, one of the things that honey jar work, it's amazing work. It is slow work, but it is amazing work, and in particular, it is amazing work when people are stubborn, when people are stubborn, I, I call this kind of magic, sending a block of wood. You don't go like this one time with a block of wood and go, I'm done. You have to sand it over and over again to right. smooth it out, to get it to be where you want. And when you've got a stubborn person, it's like wearing a rock down with water or sanding a block of wood. You've got to work on them over and over again. So I've seen people out there now, I'm, Oh, so something maybe a little controversial, but it's my opinion. It's just my opinion. I see people out there burning a giant ass candle on top of a, a honey jar. And I'm like, that kind of is not really a honey jar. That's you're burning a candle and it just happens to be on top of a honey jar. The whole concept of the honey jar is that you're burning a small candle every Monday, Wednesday, Over Friday, or every day. You're doing, like Naja talks about in her book, you're doing it on a daily practice, not just one boom, I'm done, which that kind of spell work is great for like breakthrough work or other kinds of work, but a honey jar work is sanding a block of wood. And so it's that small candle, that small candle that you burn every day or every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that is creating that ritual that, mm, like every time you're rubbing the block of wood. And that's what breaks down like your situation with your husband that's separated and he may be super stubborn. We are not getting back together. That's the perfect kind of work to be doing for that. But mm, I would lean away from doing a giant pillar on top or a giant figural candle on top of that. I would do the little, the little one. In a birthday candle, a little tea light taken out of its container. Don't do it with the container because then it won't drip. Um, or a small taper, or a small, mm -hmm. um, uh, like a Hanukkah candle, or you know, even a tall taper will burn in a day. But but it's that practice where you're doing it over and over and over and again that is the wearing them down, sweetening them up, building up the drips, building up that wax, and that when you've done that process, you'll see the difference between that energy and boom, I'm going to do this big candle, but I'm only going to do it once. And it is a different energy and it's for a different purpose. And your situation is the perfect situation where you want to wear him down. Well, the other part of that too, that's really good when you're like talking about the sanding of the wood, the other part of that magic is how committed are you to this work? 
So if you are committed to burn this little candle, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or every Monday or whatever, you are saying, I am serious, I am committed. This intention is strong, it is sincere, it is in good. It's good and magic responds to that. Um, that's, you know, that's another thing about having a spiritual practice. A practice takes time and effort. Um, you know, we talked about me studying martial arts. You know, you watch movies and you're like, oh yeah, this happens just like this. Well, no, it doesn't. It takes years. And if it looks easy, that means somebody's done, been doing it for a long time. So when you're doing honey candle, you know, honey jar work, you're actually building strength and skill and focus and stamina because you're working on that spell for a long time. And you don't even realize that as you're working it, you're also building confidence and power within yourself. And so that's really, you know, the core of, of magic and having a magic practice. You just made me think about that when you said that with the wood. I it's love so, that. Yeah, it's so, it's so much about that. And you know what? The other thing you're touching on is the idea that you are also having faith in your work. Yes. It, like I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to, and that's the other thing. People ask me all the time, well, how long do I do my honey jar? You do your honey jar till you get the result. That's it. That's your commitment. Right. You know? <laughs> I don't think you do in Kung Fu. You don't chop up blocks of wood with your hands. Do you? Yeah. Um, no, we hit, we do hit blocks of wood sometimes like when we're training in my, in my school. Um, but it's not like, um, I, I don't know, karate or something where they actually break the block. Yeah. No, I don't say, I don't study that martial art. I don't know how to break a block with my hand, but I know who, people who can, but man, you can imagine the strength they have right here. That's like training, serious yeah. training and focus. And you work up to that, but you commit, like, let's say that that was your goal is to, whatever. Let's say you have a different goal. I don't know what the, right. goal, what the Kung Fu goal would be, but let's say you want to do a high kick or something like that. Right. You may not be able to do that high kick in that, that sweeping high kick on your first try. But your goal is, I'm going to keep practicing this until I get the ability to do the high sweeping kick. Exactly. And if, that, and if that's your goal and if that's your aim, you commit to that end result. And it's the same thing with a honey jar. You're committing to the end result and you're not worried about, do I do this for three weeks? Do I do this five times? You're saying, I'm going to commit to that. Now, one thing I'm going to say to this, because she asked about the hair and the clothes. If you get a piece of hair, you can open up your honey jar and put that piece of hair in there. So let's say you, and here's how you get a piece of person's hair. Go to their bathroom, go to their bathroom. Unless they're a complete neat freak, there's <laughs> going to be a piece of hair in that bathroom. You are in complete privacy when you're in their bathroom. They don't see what you're doing, unless they're weird and they're spying on you, but you can go in there, wrap it up in a piece of toilet paper, stick it in your bra, come on out. Oh, I just went to the bathroom, flush the toilet, <laughs> come on out. Oh, I just went to the bathroom. And then you have that piece of hair that you can work with. So if you get a chance to go in, you know, you, th that the reconciliation starts heating up and you get to go over and go into his bathroom and get a piece of his hair. Now you've got a piece of his hair. And the one other thing I will add to this is, one thing I was taught, when things are good in the relationship, get a piece of the other person's hair as your insurance policy. <laughs> if things <laughs> are bad and you want to work on them and you don't have them around, you have that piece of hair that you got way back when and you can work on with it. So that's the other piece of advice I have about it. I always want to say too, like I want to add to that, like before you set them about doing any of this type of work, especially love work or reconciliation work, you should be in prayer with your higher power or doing divination to be sure that that's something that is right and that you want to do. Because we have to remain humble. That's why we work with our deities and our higher powers or gods, goddesses, angels to help us figure out first before we do any kind of work if that work is true and right to do. I like the cameo appearance behind you. <laughs> <laughs> you see someone? I see someone behind you. I have to step out for a second. That's my dog, and she wants to go out. 
Okay, you, you help her and I'll, I'll put the back on me. All right. Um, I'm going to, it's not possible to see both of us at the same time. I, there might be a way that we can show two screens at once, but I don't know how to do it. I'm so sorry. Um, that was a question that Amanda had. So we just, I just have to flip back and forth between Okay, them. I'm back. Here she's back. Um, back and better than ever. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, oh, Peter asked a question. I'm new here and using Zoom. Can we ask questions about anything? Yes, anything magical. We go to them in order. It may, you may not get it in this week, but if you come next week, we can answer with my guest next week. It's going to be Matt Oren. You know Matt Oren, right? Oh, yes. Yay. Yeah, Matt's my, my guest next week, which is a very, very exciting. He's another author. I'm like, I'm yeah, getting... he has a great book coming out. I know. I'm very excited. About, and he's working on another one, which is very exciting. We're going to talk about that next week. Amanda says, um, what are I, some ideas for manifesting and moving forward when we know there is a need for change? But we don't even know the specifics of what we need or what. Do you want some clarification on that question? That's a little, what do you think? You want to answer it or you want clarification? Well, you know, it's funny because you said clarification. So the first thing that came to my mind was she needs to do a cleansing bath at the crossroads. So she's clarified. <laughs> yeah. Here's your yeah. clarification. Time to do a I, cleansing bath. Yeah, I mean, that's a great, actually a great, idea because you it sounds like you you need you need something but you don't know what it is that you need and the jaw hit the nail on the head then you need to do something to bring some mental clarity so that you know what your next steps are so that rather than focusing on the manifestation it's focusing on the initial idea right getting the idea yeah yeah to so clear away all so, that clutter clear out the clutter do a cleansing so tell explain to Amanda, what you would do for a cleansing bath? What, how would you recommend she do it? Um, well, in my book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in her book, Good Juju. Go find good your book. Good Juju, like you talk about how to do a cleansing bath. But it's pretty, you know, in a really short, condensed um, manner. You know, you get up. Uh, I do mine. I go to the crossroads, which is where two roads form a T. I live in the city, so I don't live in the country. So I just find, you know, a, a quiet block where two roads form a T and you can do it really simple with some salt and water and, um, you know, heat that up in your bath or shower. You can get a little bit of eucalyptus oil, which is really good and just pour like a couple drops in there. Light two tea lights. So you step out into the light, anoint those um, with Florida water or olive oil. Save a little bit of your um, bath water put on some clean clothes and you walk to the crossroads as the sun is rising and face uh, your back to the east and throw that um, water that you wash with over your shoulder and say, I'm cleansed, I'm clear, I'm free of this clutter. I move forward and trust in faith. I'm ready for change and go home by a different way. You do old school. That is the old, old, old that school. Old or, school. I old school juju, but it yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. That's it works. another commitment. You know what I mean? It like, is a commitment. It's yeah. all a commitment. I'm old school magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It, you didn't, if you didn't work, you didn't earn it, right? Yeah. I mean, I suppose, you know, the shorter version of that is, you know, a smudging. You can always smudge yourself with sage or incense but i mean if you're really ready for a change we're coming back again to commitment practice time and effort if you really want to make a change then you're going to be serious about your magic and um you know that that's that's the realm i come from to get people to get up and get out and really put yourself into your magical rites and practices you're going to feel better you're going to feel like wow look what i did i actually did a cleansing bath i feel great this is wonderful. Yeah. Now you know how to do one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's great. Um, you know, if you're really going to be that, if you really want to commit to that awakened awareness to do, do something that may be a little hard, to do the hard thing maybe, then you're committed to it, you know? They said they really wanted to move forward and change. So it sounds to me like they've already tried a few things. I'm just kind of, you know, getting my impressions you know, that she's tried a few things. So maybe she needs something a little bit more powerful, a little yeah. bit stronger. Yeah, 
I love it. You know, I want to talk about one thing in your book. I didn't bring it up in the beginning. It's the only magical book I've ever seen that has a playlist on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm a music person too. You know, I love music. <laughs> yeah. You have, you guys, you have to get her book. Her book is amazing. Me it's such a great book. And but it has a. She talks about listen to these. Listen to these people's music and you'll get it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you are, <laughs> you are my twin. You're my twin flame. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love music. I listen to music all the time. I write to music. I play music when I'm crafting, doing magic. I mean, music and I are, are very, you know, deeply connected. And, you know, music is healing. It's powerful. It's inspiring. I mean, people work out to music, drive to music. So yeah, I totally am all about the music and magic. Do you have your, um, like your playlist? Like, here's my love magic playlist. Here's my, my prosperity magic playlist. Oh, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> we are I the do. same person. Here's my, you know, going to the crossroads playlist. Music. Well, you know, because I think like, I think I heard something one time, long time ago, that said all writers secretly want to be musicians and all musicians secretly want to be writers. So like, you know, I think we share this whole thing of trying to bring these thoughts in our wor world out, out through our art. You know what I mean? So yeah, music, I, I love it. All kinds of music too. I listen to everything. I do both. And it's like, when I'm not, when I'm doing the one, I want to be doing the other one. <laughs> That's the problem with me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm writing a book. I really want to be playing music right now. When I'm playing music, I'm like, oh, I really want to be writing right now. <laughs> yeah, and I can't play an instrument at all. I cannot play one instrument. But man, I do, I, I appreciate music so much. It's like, it's magical. Music is magical. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's magical word. It's, the, it's what brought me to the place I, I'm not going to tell too much of the story because it's a long story, but it, it basically brought me out of the tarot closet. It didn't bring me out of the magic closet. I was doing magic and I was a witch and all that stuff, but yeah. I wasn't reading tarot for people because I thought, uh, what if they think I'm weird or they think I'm wrong or bad or something. So I did it as a, as a vaudeville show, I read tarot <laughs> for nice. people in my in my music so i had cards associated with certain songs they'd pick a card i'd tell a funny fortune and then we'd play a song associated with that card but then from that people were like oh my god i want you to do readings for my party i want you to do a reading for me and then that's how it all opened up so music and magic are completely intertwined for me in like such a crazy way all right one more question i think well maybe i have for, time for two um natalie says thank you for our answers um carrie chrome says hi hi carrie um, Amanda says, when you talk about a love altar, does that mean you have multiple altars? Oh, so this is back to that question about a love altar that we were talking about earlier. And if so, how does that work specifically? Or do you have multiple facets to your one altar? Thank you. So that's a specific question about your practice, Naja. Oh, okay. Well, when I first started out, I did have one altar for everything. Um, but the more I started doing, um, magic i found that i got better results as i separated um, my altars out plus i just started loading up that one altar with everything so um yes i do i have a separate love altar i have a separate prosperity altar i have a separate altar for my ancestors and so it just kind of just kind of grew um with my practices and so yes i do have a specific love altar where I keep all my love work and all my love magic that I do. And, and when I go there, and it's really great because when I go there, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm working my love magic in my love altar space. So, and it doesn't have to be big, you know, um, altars can be very tiny. They can be things you, you know, just carry in your pocket. It could be, oh, this is my love stone. Okay, so I have my love stone. This is when I'm going to do my love work. And oh, this is my prosperity stone. Oh, okay. Now, and then it just kind of grows from there. Oh my gosh. That I also, yeah, I agree. You can do like a little, like a mojo bag to me is like a mini altar that you yeah, carry because exactly. you put a lot of different things or yeah. some more than one thing in a mojo bag often. Right. And that mojo bag is like a little altar you carry with you, but you can have an altar on a windowsill. You can have an altar on a little side table. You can have an altar on your nightstand. You can have an altar on a bookshelf. 
Yep. Uh, there's altars all over my house and they're all just kind of in those places where you put knickknacks of any kind. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and I mean, anything can be an altar. I, you could turn your Christmas tree. If you've got a Christmas tree, you can turn it into an altar, get an ornament that's like, represents what you want or get ornaments that represent the things that you want in your life you know whatever that is you know make ornaments you know you could do all kinds of things oh that's great because it's the season of wishes you can make an ornament mojo and put stuff inside the ornament oh that would be so fun that you could decorate it with all kinds of things and bless it and hang it on your christmas tree oh i got chills again i mean come on be your own santa you're a genius you are that's a genius. Fun. That is an that's amazing idea. Crap. That's an amazing idea. You know, we have home mojo bags. So not all mojo bags are the hidden mojo bag that you carry. Yeah. You don't let anyone touch. We do right. have home mojo bags that are more out and be seen by other mm -hmm. people and so on. So if you make a little mojo bag that you would hang up in your home, you that's a brilliant idea. Oh, uh, fun. Great. You could even do that with your kids. They could make their own mojo ornaments for christmas and hang it on a tree because yeah. our own magic ornament mojo tradition oh my I gosh i see a, i see i see something tradition. coming out of this <laughs> <laughs> this is genius so this is Najah's copyrighted idea i'm gonna yeah. every time i repeat i'm gonna give you credit for coming up with this <laughs> idea. Um, which brings us to our next question which is Aja says, or Asia, or Aja says, how have both of you included your families into your magical routines? Any specific one that you introduced to children, introduce children to first? Well, you want to take that one because my kids could not be less interested in magic. But they're, I'm like, you're free to do what you want, you know? I've got two boys. Yeah, it's, it's kind of been the same thing. My, my son will always say, oh, yeah, that's my mom out there in the backyard, you know, <laughs> doing these rites and rituals. It's kind of by osmosis. Um, you know, I'm very blessed. My family is very supportive. Um, I would just, like, try to bring the fun elements around to it. Oh, we're going to light a candle today. When we say our prayers, we're going to say this one little phrase. You can say it if you want to or you don't. You know, just kind of lead by example. Um, oh, oh, this is fun, or what's this little thing, or oh, here's all these different holidays. We're going to put this little thing on the mantle, um, you know, and this, this is significant for this holiday, and just be gentle with it and say, oh, well, that's what this is, or, um, and then sometimes they will come to you and ask you, hey, I got this going on. Oh, okay, well, here's this little thing I made for you. I mean, pretty much it's pretty easy with candles. Everybody likes a candle. So, you know, I would make like a little tea light for, for my kids for something and we'd light the candle together and say a prayer. So it's gentle and easy and, um, and just let them come to you that way. And that's worked tremendously for, for me. I, my kids are grown. I have grandbabies now. And um, so, yeah, we've just- Fun. Yeah. You have so and, fun have grandbabies. You can oh. totally, see, that's the thing. When you're a grandma, you can really get to them because you're, <laughs> you're magical grandma and they come to you and they, oh, let's see what magical girl. And your kids are always going to be kind of like, what, you know, whatever, you're my parents, but your grandkids, I think you're going to have a lot more influence yeah, on them. You just have fun, just lead by example. Yeah. Well, I will say this too. I'm not against a sneaky trick on your kids. <laughs> I have done all kinds of sneaky magic on my kids, of course, to bring good things and to protect yeah, them yeah. and all that kind of stuff, but they don't need to know about it. What they don't know won't hurt them, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> Magical grandma. <laughs> I'm waiting for my magic. My kids are 19 and 21, so I can wait a couple of years for my magical, my children, but I'm going to be magical grandma. Be grandma. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things I will say that my kids have really loved and my uh, grandchildren really like too are crystals. Cause you can just give them a little crystal and they just love crystals. I mean, I love crystals. That's pretty much drew me in. I think that's really, really how I kind of, you know, thinking back, I just fell in love with crystals and nature. And then one thing just kept leading to another, you know? Yeah. You, kids are little ones are so open to that nature world of nature. Mm -hmm. They're still in that place of awe and wonder. We want to keep that as long as possible. I got to tell one little funny story about my older son, Morgan, who is, um, he's a Taurus 
and he is a Taurus. He knows I'm a cancer. He's a Taurus. He knows that if I nag mom enough, she will break down and give me whatever. <laughs> so he learned that. He like, mom, I want this. Mom, 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 mom. I'm like, okay, fine. You can have it. But anyway, when he was little, probably around, I want to say he was probably around six or seven. He was young, six maybe. I said to him, you know, you have a guardian angel. And he said, no, I don't. I have a guardian demon. <laughs> so our joke, our family joke is your guardian demon is watching out for you. <laughs> there you go. Whatever you need. <laughs> However you want to go, kid. But it's so funny. That's what my kids are. They're like, you're going to, but they're not, they're accepting of me. You know, they're accepting of me doing it. My partner's really accepting of me. He's awesome. They're, they're kind of like, that's your thing. So I'm like, okay, but I love the guardian demons. So like I see these, sometimes I see like um, memes about like guardian demons and I always send them to my older son. I'm like, oh my God, you're guardian demons. Oh. Great. That's great. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, I think you can, when your kids are young, you know, like Naja said, you can incorporate it. You can, you can bring it in. And it like, I think I'm really of the belief and I think you're probably the same. It's like people find their own path and they're going to oh, find definitely. the for them. And yeah. so I've never pushed my, like, this is the way you have to be to my Me kids. Either. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that's like one of the things that makes us about our path is like, it's open. It's welcoming. If you want to come, fine. You don't. Good. You know, we're here. And so I think that's really helpful and, and nice to people, especially in your family. You know, um, we just do our thing and, and, and uh, everybody gets along and enjoys it is supportive and, if they need something, fine. If not, I'm doing it anyway. So, yeah. you know, I'm still going to be out there greeting the sun and the moon. So, you know, it that. works. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Nacha, you are a delight. And I am so thankful and so happy to have met you. And, I, and we were in the Llewellyn booth. And now, I, and now we're, I, I have my other book that came out on Wiser. My tarot book came out on Wiser. But my new book, the Candle Magic book, is coming out on Llewellyn. So we're, ah. we're going to be hanging and banging yeah. at Llewellyn booth again this year. You've got some interesting and cool things coming up. Before we go, I want to get to that because you are going to be doing something so cool this summer. What is that? Yes, I am going to be um, one of the headliners at the Mystic South Convention um, in Atlanta in July, uh, July of 2020. July next year, I'll be in Atlanta for the Mystic South Convention, and I am so excited. I can hardly I, wait. So uh, that's my big news I, right now. <laughs> are you teaching? Are you speaking? What are you going to be doing? Um, I'm going to be teaching workshops and, um, you know, um, signing, autographing books, uh, three days of workshops. I've got some workshops lined up and, and I'm also writing. So I'm working on, you know, spells and things like that. And hopefully it will have some news forthcoming if I can get all my ducks in a row. <laughs> you know how it is when you write. So, yeah. but yeah, I'm excited to be writing again. And if you so, need someone to write a blurb for your book, I would totally love to do that. Thank you. <laughs> you gotta start thinking about those things. I know, so, I know on. we do. I wanna, I'm gonna hit you up to write a, can a blurb for my Candle Magic book. All right, so. all right, we're on. Um, you got it. I love that. So what do you think I could do for having me on your show? This has been <laughs> so much fun. Isn't this the most fun? I told her before we came on when we were just meeting, with, I mean, you're going to have the best time. <laughs> um, where can they find information about the, the work, the workshops and everything this summer? Is there a site? Um, there is, I, it's the Mystic South. You just Google Mystic South 2020 and okay. it should come up and it's in Atlanta. So it'll come up. That's, so that's my big news for right now. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, Speaking of which, my boyfriend's here because we're going to go see his mom sing in the choir tonight. It's very oh, exciting. Nice, nice. So, um, anyway, so it's time for us to end. It was an amazing time with you, Naja. I love thank you, you so much. So nice. Thank you, Madam Pamita. I'm You're so right. happy I met you. This I am so happy I met you. Am I going to see, am I going to, now this is a question for me. Am I going to see you at INATS this yes. year? Okay, I'll see you at INATS then. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. All of the amazing. Hi, everyone. Guys. You guys are amazing. I love you guys so much. You are so amazing. You have amazing questions. You're always so fun. It, we always have the best. We have the best time. Najah and I have the best time because of you guys and your amazing questions. So thank you, so everyone. So go find Najah online. I have a bunch of pe a bunch of ways that you can reach you. We got to get to that too. Um, Instagram, Facebook. 
she everywhere. I don't I think you are the only Naja Lightfoot in the world, so I don't think you're gonna get confused <laughs> and find the wrong one. Yeah. Subscribe to the wrong one. So you go find her online, go buy her book. You can get it at all the usual outlets. It's amazing, amazing book. Experience people, you will learn something from this book. I have learned something from this book. Kung Fu and magic, who knew? And then um, if you are a person that's trying to figure out how to get into magic, it's such a lovely, lovely way to learn how to do that. So find her book, Good Juju is her book. Naja is amazing, thank you so much. Mwah. You're amazing and I'll talk to you soon. And all you guys, we'll see you next week when our guest will be Matt Oren. I'm so excited, Matt Oren's gonna be here with me. He's so magical, he's like Salem. East Coast Cool Witch. So we're going to have <laughs> him on talking about his book that's coming out next year, Psychic Magic, Psychic Witch, Psychic Witch. And we're going to be talking about that and all the things. And uh, he's amazing. So we'll see you next week. Bye. Have a beautiful, beautiful week, everyone. Thanks again, Naja. Thank and you. We'll talk. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.